Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. Uh, my name's Adam. Welcome. Thanks for joining me this afternoon. Uh, okay. uh, we are doing uh, a quick uh, music tour uh, of London uh, this afternoon. Uh, thanks for being with me. Uh, yeah, two o'clock on a Friday afternoon. When we're not on lockdown, you would usually find me at Tottenham Court Road Station uh, leading uh, the, the Rock and Roll London Tour. Don't go to Tottenham Court Road Station. I'm not there. I'm here. I'm in your house. The tours are not running at the moment. They will be back very soon. But in this slot, where I'd usually be doing the um, Rock and Roll London Tour, I thought I'd do a, a quick um, presentation today, a guided tour, if you like, looking forward to the time when we, we can all travel a bit more freely and a bit more safely. Stay safe, everyone. Um, and thanks for joining me this afternoon. Uh, my name's Adam, and we're looking to visit recording studios the world over today. We're going to take about 25 minutes to do this. And um, yeah, so let's get uh, cracking here. I'm going to uh, just share my screen with you. So hopefully um, we'll have a little bit of a, a slideshow presentation happening in a second or two. Uh, here we go. Smashing, here we are. Now you should all be able to see on the screen there. Um, London Music Tours, socially distanced guided tours, tour guiding from home. I'm coming round your house to lead a guided tour this afternoon. We're talking about famous studios. Uh, the, um, well, my, my name's Adam, Adam Scott Gilding. I'm a qualified tour guide, I'm a Westminster guide. I've been leading guided tours in London with the famous London Walks Company for 15 years, man and beast, 15 years. Uh, and these days I teach tour guiding as well at the University of Westminster. And today we're looking at the studios. I've picked four to look at. I was inspired to do this by the research for my virtual tour, which takes place this evening at six o'clock. The Kinks virtual tour is tonight at six o'clock. And in my research, I was out and about in North London and I was looking at this building here. Um, this is Conk Studios, just beyond Crouch End in North London. And looking at the building, it just made me think, not much of a building to look at, is it? Usually on our guided tours, I, I like to look at buildings like this. This is Westminster Abbey, you know, and this is more the sort of thing. Um, we would like to show off on guided tours, a bit of architecture, ornate design, deep history. That's one of the challenges on the music tours is, um, well, you know, wish you were here, really? In suburban North London, looking at this box. Well, this box is Conk Studios. Uh, it's been the Kinks recording studio since 1973. It's one of the last um, independent recording studios, world-class independent recording studios left. And so it's a very important building. It doesn't look much does it? It doesn't look much, but it's a very important building in terms of the recording business and the career of the kinks. Now, the thing about the buildings that house these recording studios, if they've been in any way purpose built, then that means that they, they won't be any older. Most studios, if they were purpose built, they won't be any older than 90 years old tops because, you know, the recording business doesn't become prevalent until the 1930s. And so it's very often the case that we're not looking at the loveliest of buildings on our tours when we're looking for recording studios. So it just made me think, where can you do that? Well, let's have a look. If you're just joining me, my name's Adam. I lead music tours in London. Thanks for joining me. We're looking for the famous recording studios of the world here. I've chosen four. Uh, one in New Orleans, uh, two in Memphis, and one in Nashville. So this is your recording studio bucket list for when we can all get outside and go traveling uh, again. We're all looking forward to that. Different kinds of studios as well. One of them you're gonna to have to really look for. One of them's a bit of an adventure and you're gonna to have to use your imagination as well. Two of them have guided tours and they're very good. And the other is, well, a reconstruction where you can have a wander around yourself. So different kinds of tours. Just to say, um, I've visited all of these places in person and I've paid to do so. This is not a PR stunt. Um, I've paid my way here, and these are my honest opinions on these locations. 
So, my name's Adam. Thanks for joining me. We're in New Orleans already. We've only just started, and here we are with London Music Tours in New Orleans. Um, yeah, this one. G&M Recording Studios. Tiny recording studios with a huge history. Um, it doesn't have a guided tour. It doesn't have a museum. Uh, it barely has a place on the map. And so you have to do a little bit of hunting, a little bit of raking around, and you'll come across on North Rampart Street, right on the, the cusp of the French Quarter, you'll come across this plaque. Cosmo Matassa set up his recording studio here. And you'll think to yourself, oh, I'm in the right place. Fantastic. And then, as if one plaque wasn't enough, they've got two. GNM Recording Studios. Here's the cast list. You've got Little Richard here. Um, you've got Fats Domino. Fats Domino recorded the track The Fat Man here. And so this is a, a, these are the monumental cornerstones of rock and roll. So you're in the right place. You think, right, uh, I'll get the selfie before I go in at 840 uh, Rampart Street. Got to get the selfie. And then you'll cross the threshold and you'll go, oh, hallowed ground. Look at this. It's even set in stone. G&M Music Shop. Then you'll get inside. It's a laundrette, as we call it in this country. A laundromat. Uh, and so it's, you know. Is it an anti-climax? I don't know. Uh, time moves on. In fact, the g and uh, 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 recording studio moved on in the 1950s to bigger and better premises. This was a real rough and ready uh, premises here. You'll stick your head round the laundromat door and the guys who work the shop are well used to this, it would seem, because they shout, yeah, come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. And, you know, as long as you're not disturbing them, they let you have a nose around uh, to see if you can soak up the atmosphere where Little Richard recorded the, the songs for which he's still famous. Where Fats Domino made The Fat Man, the one that, you know, launches him. Uh, we miss you, Fats. Uh, the um, uh, recording studio well, was tiny, absolutely rudimentary. And you can wander around the laundrette as it is today to see if you can soak up some of the atmosphere. Now, I think this is very New Orleans, this. Um, here you are. You're on the, more or less on the corner of Domain and North Rampart Street, right on the edge of the French Quarter. And you've also there, you're just opposite Congo Square. You're just opposite Congo Square. So while you're there, I, I would urge you to have a look at Congo Square as well. Now, thank the Lord God in heaven, uh, Congo Square no longer exists as it once did. Uh, the slaves used to congregate here on a Sunday. Uh, as many, they say, as 500 at a time. And they were, one of the things they would do on a Sunday in the 18th century, as long ago as the 1740s, one of the things they would do is play music. They would play music. So all the music we love, all the music we adore, all the music that we listen to and, you know, go travelling in search of, uh, comes from this, this spot, this troubled, this difficult spot. You'll feel it. If you've ever listened, if you love music, if you love people, you'll feel it. It's an amazing place. It's it's very New Orleans. This you can pick up. You'll pick up the atmosphere uh, at GNM Recording Studios as well. Even though it, it, it's a laundromat, a launderette these days. So do visit Congo Square uh, while you're there, uh, just opposite um, the old studio. Terrific statue of Sidney Bechet there as well. There's statues of Louis Armstrong. There's the Mahalia Jackson uh, Theatre. Uh, the whole area has been reclaimed for black musicians uh, in the 21st century. Sidney Bechet is worth uh, a mention here in a London context because come on a tour with me, I'll show you his plaque here. He, he lived in London for a period as well, uh, just off Fitzroy Square. We'll do the jazz tour one night. So yeah. J&M Studios, it's not a museum, there's a little plaque, it's a laundrette today, but do, you know, worth a visit. If you like music, you'll get the vibe. When you're in New Orleans as well, visit uh, New Orleans Architecture Tours, uh, nolatours.com. These guys are terrific. They do an amazing guided tour of the St. Louis Number 1 Cemetery, which is the famous cemetery where they shot the, the acid trip scene in Easy Rider. Uh, in 1969, Peter Fonda and Dennis Hopper. They do great tours, uh, the New Orleans Architecture Tour guys. Follow them on Instagram as well. Um, the uh, map that I used uh, a moment ago, uh, the map that I used there actually came from uh, the uh, New Orleans Tourists Board website, neworleans.com. 
Oof, a whistle stop tour. Um, let's just nip up the road to Memphis. Thank you for joining me. My name's Adam. Uh, from New Orleans to, to Memphis, we're going in search of stacks now. Um, this was one of my favourite places in Memphis. Uh, here's how it looks today. Stacks, their headquarters, their famous recording studios. We're talking Otis Redding. We're talking uh, Booker T and the MGs uh, out of Memphis. Now, this is how it looked in 1989, just before it was demolished. That's how it looks today. And this is how it looked in 1989, just before it was demolished. Because it was most certainly demolished. They knocked the whole thing down. They, forgive them. They know not what they did. Um, it's been rebuilt. Uh, here it is today. That's what it looked like originally, just before it was knocked down. Uh, here it is today. Um, I am delighted to say it's an amazing museum, the Museum of American Soul Music. Uh, and they've recreated the building absolutely flawlessly. It's worth a visit. My schedule in Memphis was packed tight, it really was. And I had to, to, to get to squeeze this in. I had to cut, curtail my trip to Graceland. I had to, um, you know, forego the pleasures uh, of Elvis Presley's uh, plane. Uh, so, I, I, you know, they're just planes, really. Um, so it's, you know, once you've seen Graceland the house, that's what you want to see um, at um, Graceland when you visit. You know, if, if, you, if you miss the planes, it's no great shakes. They're just planes. And I, I would urge you to do so if you've got a, a tight schedule, because Stax is well worth a look. Here's the plaque that they put up when they knocked the building down. And now they've rebuilt the building, the plaque's still there. I love these American plaques. They're the size of motorway signs, and they've got a lot of information on them. Um, the Staple Singers, the Bar Keys, Albert King, um, Isaac Hayes as well. This is uh, Isaac Hayes Cadillac. Uh, I'm not much of a petrol head, but what a car, eh? Pretty good. Um, you can see this at the Stax uh, Museum. Uh, which they've, um, which is now housed in the reconstructed Stax headquarters and studios. Let's see if we can have a small nose around in here. I've made this little clip. Stax Museum Studio A. It was a converted cinema when they built it into a studio. And when they rebuilt the building, one of the great things they did, when you come in, you can they've recreated the rake. So you walk downhill in the old converted cinema. So it really recreates the shape of the place meticulously. It's beautifully done. I've got a lot of exhibits, but I think my particular favourites, here they come. Uh, Duck Dunn's bass and Steve Cropper's guitar. In, on the spot, you know, where they recorded all those great tracks. Uh, the little map here. Uh, you're just south of the downtown area for Stax. Um, don't miss it when you're in uh, Memphis. I'm often asked on, on the London Music Tours when I'm talking to people about visiting Memphis, people ask me, oh, is it, is, was it safe? Is it safe to travel there and all that? And well, my personal experience was, yes, well, I've got a terrifically uh, warm welcome, as you might expect in the South. Um, I had a, a terrific time. And um, OK, Beale Street was a bit tasty at night time, I'll be frank with you. Uh, but, you know, all the good places are a bit tasty at night time, aren't they? Really? I think so. Uh, so yeah, just exercise common sense and, and politeness and you'll be fine. That was certainly my experience. So that's where Stax is in Memphis. Great, great museum. The Stax website, staxmuseum.com. Follow them on Twitter as well, at Stax Memphis. They're open again. Uh, it's, it's the best $13 you'll spend in the United States of America. How about that? Uh, the Memphis Tourist Board is Memphis Travel. Great resource. Uh, thanks for joining me, folks. My name's Adam of London Music Tours. I lead music tours in London, and today I'm talking about internationally famous recording studios and how to visit them. This is a map of Nashville. Now, let's head up the road to Nashville. We're flying through this. Uh, let's drop a pin on uh, Music Row uh, because we're looking for um, a, an absolutely terrific studio here. Um, RCA Studio B. Now, Nashville is, is nuts, okay? Nashville is bananas. And one of the easiest things you'll do in Nashville is miss everything because it's just, it's, it's manic. It's a party from forever, from dawn till dusk. Um, it's a terrific place. Um, the, uh, yeah, and it's easy to miss the cultural stuff. Don't miss this, don't miss this. 
Uh, this is RCA Studio B. It's a fantastic little spot. Um, here's the here's Nipper. Can you see Nipper there? The famous in the U.S. Nipper is the the emblem of the Radio Corporation of America and the famous Victrola um, record player. Uh, here in this country, of course, he's HMV, his master's voice. When you can come and see me on a tour again, I'll take you to the spot where the his master's voice painting was made on Piccadilly, just along the road from the Hard Rock Cafe. But it's the emblem of RCA as well, and their Studio B is just fantastic. There's the there's the piano inside that that Elvis liked to play. Elvis's piano. Can you imagine? What a thrill. Here's the space set up with the um with the lighting the way that Elvis liked it, we're told. Uh, now this is a guided tour and this is Brenda. She was our tour guide the day that we pitched up. She was amazing. Um, she was a former school teacher and you could tell that with her no-nonsense approach to group management. She was terrific uh, and very knowledgeable as well. She told us all about Charlie Pride and the Everly Brothers and Dolly Parton. Um, really great tour guide. The American word for that is a docent. It's a terrible word, I think. Lots of great things about America, but the word docent, it sounds so much like docile, doesn't it? I don't know where it comes from. She was certainly not docile. She was a terrific uh, and knowledgeable and fabulously friendly tour guide. Thank you, Brenda. Uh, we still tell everybody about your tour. Um, it's a guided tour, and it's run by the Country Music Hall of Fame guys. Now, the Country Music Hall of Fame, I'll maybe talk about that another day, it is a day's work, folks. So the way that we divided up our time, and it worked very well, we did the RCA studio in the morning, and we did the, the Country Music Hall of Fame in the afternoon. We should have left more time if we'd known better. We would have gone straight from the studio uh, to the Country Music Hall of Fame. It's absolutely packed, the Country Music Hall of Fame. Uh, every detail is worth looking at, so leave yourself plenty of time, but don't miss this out. RCA Studio B. Elvis recorded here in Nashville, Tennessee. It's a terrific place. Um, Studio B dot org, home of, home of a thousand hits. Have a look at their website. Um, I'm going to put a playlist up on the Facebook page in a little while with some of those 1,000 hits. This was my favourite bit at RCA Studio B. Uh, can you see it's a, a bit of LX tape on the floor there? This is the vocal sweet spot. The vocal sweet spot. This is where Elvis liked to sing on this spot here. <gasps> Fantastic. Thrilling stuff. They've got a similar thing in Memphis. There you go. Travelled thousands of miles to look at two bits of LX tape on the floor. This is on the floor in Sun Studios back down in Memphis. The um famous recording studio where Elvis made his first uh, recordings. Let's have a quick nose around in there. There's the window that faces out into the street that Elvis would have passed and the door that he would have come through to the reception desk where he would have asked how can I make a record? And here, the inner sanctum, the holy of holies, the room where the magic happened. Uh, it's a terrific uh, setup they've got there. It's not at all slick. It's very welcoming, very friendly, um, and most atmospheric, most atmospheric. Jerry Lee recorded here as well. Johnny Cash recorded here. Uh, Carl Perkins uh, in Memphis, Tennessee. The records that Elvis made here, many of us still believe those records hold the kernel of his genius. It's a terrific visit, Sun Studios. It's also a guided tour. This is, this is Mark. Uh, he was our guide. Also a very talented musician. Uh, a great singer-songwriter. I'll put some links up to his work uh, on the Facebook page when, when we're done here. Uh, terrific guided tour. Uh, it, 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 they've got a museum upstairs where they've recreated Dewey Phillips' studio in Memphis where he played Elvis' record, first man to play Elvis' record. Great exhibit, and at the end, they bring out uh, something that Sam Phillips, the original owner of Sun Records, bequeathed to the museum just before he died. Um, Elvis's microphone, uh, which is quite thrilling, and the um, the advice that the tour guide gave, her, gave us, that Mark gave us, well it wasn't the advice, it was it was an order in fact, it was an instruction. It's the best thing I've ever been told by a tour guide. He said, I'm going to pass this round for you to look at. Don't lick the microphone, he said. He said he was fed up of people kissing the microphone. Don't lick Elvis's microphone. 
It's the best advice I've ever been given by a tour guide. Um, very energetic, fantastically knowledgeable tour guide Mark was as well. He was a particular Jerry Lee Lewis fan, and Jerry Lee made a great many records here. Jerry Lee stayed with Sun Records uh, for a long time. In fact, uh, here's here's a glorious thing. This is Jerry Lee's piano, and can you see the see the black mark there? That's where Jerry Lee burned it with a cigarette end. That's Jerry Lee's fag burn there. Isn't that fantastic? Um, yeah, it's rickety, it's rough and ready, they've got a lovely little bar there, uh, Sun Studios. It's a bit further to the east of the downtown area, so you'll need to get an Uber or something. Um, the the very efficient service they've got there, the um, public transport's not quite so great. But uh, yeah, don't miss Sun Studios. There's a lot to do in Memphis. Sunstudio.com, simple as that. Uh, have a look at their website, they're on all the socials as well. Uh, so follow them too. We've got our own recording studios here in London, of course. Well, this is Abbey Road. Now, Abbey Road do their own tours from time to time. Uh, on, we're on lockdown at the moment, of course, but from time to time they do their own tours. And um, I'll, maybe do, I'll maybe do another thing about that another day, about how to go on those tours and how to see inside Abbey Road. It's quite something... Uh, yeah, it's quite a special place. The plaque here is for Edward Elgar, the famous English composer. One of the things that people sometimes say to me when we look at Abbey Road on our music tours in London, um, in fact, I don't know how many times people have said this to me. Some people who've, you know, come a long way to see where the Beatles made their records. Uh, some people say, oh, it's just a house. Well, yeah, I, I suppose it is just a house. It's a 19th century house converted into a recording studio. So I suppose, yeah. It is just a house, but if you go, if you go through life with that attitude, then you know, the Grand Canyon's just a big hole in the ground. You know, be be more positive. <laughs> it's what went on inside this house. The Beatles made the bulk of their output here. The thing that we do have here, even when we can't get inside the studio when they're not running tours, they've got a smashing gift shop for all your you know souvenirs. But they've got the crossing as well, the crosswalk, the world's most famous crosswalk, uh, which I'm looking forward to crossing. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Saturday, the 11th of July, on my first guided walking tour since March. So we're gradually and slowly coming out of lockdown. I'm doing the Kinks virtual tour this evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Adam uh, of London Music Tours. And with London Walks this evening, I'm doing the Kinks virtual tour at 7 o'clock on Zoom. Uh, so that's in about five hours' time. There are still a couple of tickets left if you'd like to come and join me. Link's on the Facebook page here. Um, £8 a ticket. Uh, come and see me. Um, tomorrow night at six o'clock, it's the Rock and Roll London Walk with live music and quiz. <laughs> There's a lot going on in that one. Do come and see me if you can. That one's also £8. And with that one, your £8 ticket entitles you to a free version of the Friday afternoon tour that we usually do at two o'clock. So keep your ticket and then come and see me when this lousy war is over, when we can all be outside uh, exploring again. Um, I'm back on the streets this week. This is a, a highly inaccurate representation of what I look like. Um, I'm two metres apart from my five people group. And on Sunday, I'm doing the Kinks tour uh, because we're good to go. According to Visit England, London Walks tours are good to go. So I'm going. Sunday, 11 o'clock, online booking only, limited to five people. Uh, I'll be wearing a mask, you might be glad to hear. Um, booking closes at 11 o'clock on Saturday morning to ensure that we've got a small group of people. We're doing private tours for small groups. Uh, keep in touch, I'd, I'd love to see you. Um, every Friday night... On Zoom with London Walks every Friday night from tonight for the next six weeks, I'm doing the Friday Music Festival, uh, a different musical tour uh, every Friday night. So, poof, there's a lot going on. I hope you're all well and I hope you're all safe um, as we start to, to creep out of lockdown. Um, I am, and a number of my colleagues are leading uh, guided tours slowly and gently we're easing back into it um, if you don't feel safe coming out just yet we've got the virtual tour still going so come and see us on a virtual tour my name's adam it's friday afternoon in the universe as jack kerouac once wrote 
Um, thank you for letting me into your homes uh, to rant about music. We visited four recording studios there. I'm going to put this uh, video up on Facebook and on the fa on the YouTube channel as well. So uh, get in touch if you've got any questions. Um, hopefully I'll see a few of you uh, another time on one of my tours out there when we can all get outside or perhaps on one of my virtual tours. My name's Adam. Thanks very much indeed for joining me and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.